Uh, yeah, thank you. <coughs> so indeed, we'll be we'll be telling you about the overhaul of the Finnish library sector subject indexing, <coughs> and what we mean by that uh, is is moving from from those monolingual thesauri to multilingual machine readable interlinked SCOS vocabularies in in subject indexing uh, in in the whole of the uh, library sector in Finland. Uh, and why? Well, the most most obvious and immediate uh, benefit uh, is is naturally the multilinguality, uh, and uh, where indexing in, in in one language uh, allows you to uh, search in an using another. Uh, but also also the uh, sort of the more uh, maybe exciting uh, benefit is that the links to other vocabularies um, allows for for cross-domain uh, interoperability. And uh, and far more exciting uh, possibilities uh, in the future. <coughs> and finally, using using URIs makes makes updating easier since uh, when when terms in the vocabulary change, uh, the URIs are, are permanent, and and that makes makes things easier. Uh, so where we began, uh, we we started with with YSA, the General Finnish Thesaurus, uh, which was the most most used thesaurus in Finland, uh, developed since the 1980s and, and has been used to describe all of the non-fictional literature published in Finland, among other things. Uh, so it was quite large, more than 30,000 30, concepts, uh, and it was monolingual, so only in Finnish. Uh, but Finland has two official languages, uh, Finnish and Swedish. Uh, so there was, uh, was this uh, Swedish language counterpart called Allars, uh, Finnish. Finnish Swedish to be precise so if anyone's wondering about the, about the weird flag uh, that's the that's the flag of the Finnish Swedes uh, I originally used the, the <laughs> flag of the country of Sweden and was was swiftly corrected that it was it was wrong so yeah uh, and it's Allars is basically very much the same as, as YSA but there are some very slight uh, structural differences due to due to the languages but very closely related. And in, in, uh, in 2018, um, we also merged this uh, thesaurus of music terms, a specialized thesaurus used for uh, indexing music, uh, called Musa, and, and it, was, it was absorbed into, into YSA and, the, again, the Finnish-Swedish counterpart Silla uh, into, into Allars, so that we had only, only these two uh, vocabularies used for all non-fiction uh, public publications um, uh, in in the in the library sector, and the, where we were moving to uh, is is uh, YSO or the General Finnish Ontology, uh, and the work on that began in 2003. So this is kind of a culmination of, of more than 15 years of work, uh, in a sense. And uh, what's the difference? Well, the um, the YSO uh, it's it's very closely uh, based on on YSA and, and Allars, uh, with with just the places uh, separated into a well into a separate vocabulary called called YSO places, uh, but it, it basically has all the same terms uh, represented. Uh, but what we did, we moved from the from the term level to the concept level, uh, and this allowed us to to combine these two uh, different language vocabularies. Uh, I mentioned the the slight structural differences between uh, uh, Allars and, and YSA, and by moving to the concept level behind the terms, we were able to sort of eliminate uh, these uh, uh, inconsistencies. Uh, so the concepts are based on, on Finnish and Swedish, and then they have also been translated into English. So, so there is actually three, three languages represented in the YSO. Uh, YSO also has a complete hierarchy and much more rigid, rigid uh, semantics uh, for the relations between the, uh, between the concepts uh, compared to YSA. And finally, and perhaps most uh, excitingly, uh, YSO has been linked to other Finnish ontologies of other domains, such as uh, agriculture or museum objects or public services or whatever uh, that are used in, in, in other, um, other domains and other organizations uh, outside of the uh, library sector. Uh, and it also has been linked to uh, Library of Congress subject headings and, and to Wikidata, so <coughs> some international linking as well. Uh, and and uh, finally, we had two more uh, very specialized vocabularies used for the conversion, so the form and genre. 
vocabulary that was used for <laughs> for forms and genres, and then seco, which includes uh, which contains these um, like musical instruments and ensembles and and voices and and things that are used for for very specific uh, uh, subject indexing of of, of music. But uh, yeah, the, the the scope of the project, the uh, original name was from YSH to YSO, but it kind of expanded. There was, well, uh, there were quite a few more vocabularies than the ju just those two. But also, uh, we have in 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 Finland, we have moved uh, our subject indexing rules to uh, uh, to RDA. Uh, but we have never converted uh, the existing records. Uh, so this conversion project that we were doing was seen as an ample opportunity to also update the, uh, update the previous records to, um, mm, to be compliant with the new uh, indexing rules. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was the first lesson learned lesson learned uh, was uh, related to communication. So, um, well, first of all, you got to sort of know your audience. Uh, you need to uh, release different sorts of messages to, to library directors and managers compared to metadata specialists or, uh, or the more technical staff. <clears throat> and uh, and you should also sort of have a clear idea on on uh, on the messages that uh, uh, differentiating between the, the sort of push type messages that you send out widely uh, that regard the project itself and schedules and things like and if you need something from from the libraries or whatever uh, as opposed to these sort of pool type messages that you set up somewhere where where a person who is uh, interested in the project can uh, learn the complex details or the live status of conversions or whatever uh, more and more uh, sort of easily uh, so as not to burden too much but but provide all the <coughs> all the necessary information uh, so yeah uh, we had for the for the conversion um, we had the the authority records uh, so YSO and the other vocabularies, they have been uh, published in, in the Finto Finnish Thesaurus and Ontology Service that has a RESTful API. And some library systems are able to use it uh, as is, but uh, not all. So for, for the more uh, uh, conservative, more traditional library systems, we needed a, a scores to mark converter. And uh, so basically we wanted to move from this uh, to this. And uh, and the second second uh, conversion was the bibliographic records. So uh, we basically needed to take the the, uh, the rec bibliographic records from the various library system databases uh, that had YSA and others uh, uh, indexing in them, and and then convert them into the uh, new vocabularies, and then push them back into the into library systems. So what we needed was two sets of rules: um, one for the authority records, and another for the uh, uh, for the bibliographic records. So we formed this expert group uh, of uh, indexing specialists and various uh, from various national groups and, and libraries and, and set to work on creating these rules. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't just two sets of rules be because the bibliographic uh, records had separate rules for fiction and non-fiction and music and film. Uh, so actually, we ended up with, with like six sets of rules <coughs> in total. And uh, and also uh, this uh, since uh, moving moving just from the vocabulary to another is simple, but but as I mentioned, we wanted to also also uh, update um, uh, the existing records to the new uh, indexing rules. So um, uh, well, I have an example here. Uh, so basically, here is a, um, a subject field 650 that has Hard Rock Finland and 2000 and 2009 in it. Uh, and if this publication, if it is, uh, if it is about Finnish rock music, uh, then the uh, Hard Rock remains in the 650 field. Uh, Finland uh, is, uh, goes to 651 uh, uh, as, a, as a subject uh, place. Uh, but if the publication actually is a music score or a recording or a video, then the uh, then the genre is is hard rock, so it goes to 655, and the place of origin is Finland, so it goes to 370. So uh, the, the, this just goes to show that the uh, rules were kind of complex. And uh, what we wanted to uh, convert, well, naturally the the National Union Catalog Melinda. 
uh, but also the local library databases, uh, and, and that was challenging in the sense that they use various different um, library systems, so uh, uh, we needed to be quite, quite flexible in the conversion. Uh, and, and this part is actually uh, still underway. Uh, and finally, there are other systems. Uh, as I mentioned, YSA was the most used uh, thesaurus in Finland, so it was also used outside of the library sector. And we really have no idea who is using it. Uh, we have no way of contacting this. Um, and we don't know when or if or how they are going to do the conversion, but, but YSA isn't, isn't updated anymore, so uh, hopefully they will someday. Uh, so yeah, lessons learned here is that uh, history has a tendency to accumulate, meaning that, that uh, well, uh, as uh, the previous speaker mentioned, uh, this organically grown metadata, uh, the rules have, have slight variations along the years, and, and, and it was very important to get the experts uh, involved, uh, and especially in the sort of uh, hands-on looking at the data, and remember that, oh yeah, this was a workaround for, for that case, and this was used back then for uh, two years or, or, or whatever. So uh, actually uh, making the, the conversion rules was a lot of work. But yeah, next uh, Jarmo will, will, will tell more about uh, the more technical details. I'm Jarmo Saarikko from the National Library of Finland. Uh, so I will talk some of the uh, technical details and take some additional uh, special cases which we uh, ended up uh, uh, having a hard time uh, solving, but we did solve them. Uh, especially for the uh, 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 databases outside of the library sector and uh, some uh, other sources, we, uh, we uh, created the uh, code in Python 3 language and we shared uh, uh, it as an open source in a, in a GitHub uh, repository. So anyone, anyone who wanted to make the same conversion could pick up the code and run it by themselves if they wanted to. So the original plan was uh, quite simple, just one term to another term in, in the other vocabulary. That was the original idea, what we thought we were going to do. But in reality, it was much more complex. Uh, like uh, we already heard, the, the uh, Conventions for indexing were quite different for different types of data. So uh, within the fields, there, there were some special terms which changed the meaning of the other terms in certain types of data. So the conversion program, uh, uh, the, the rules had to include those, and the program had to handle all those uh, hundreds of ifs uh, uh, along the way so that we could handle all the different cases. So here's the simplified. Uh, picture of the, what the program was doing. So we would start from a database on the top left corner. We would pull out the mark records, which included the, the uh, vocabulary uh, terms uh, described with the vocabularies which were in question. Uh, they were handled uh, each record by record, and within a record, uh, we would uh, handle the field by field. Uh, and then um, when opening the field, we would first have to analyze uh, the place records. And uh, after finding those, uh, we would have to uh, see what, the re what was the record type, then take each term, uh, each within each field, one term by term. Uh, we would try to match them with the vocabularies. And if uh, we didn't find a match, we would produce an error in the, in the log file. Um, and if we did find it, we would uh, create a new uh, record, a uh, uh, new field out of it. Then we would write the old fields which were going to be removed. We wrote them all in the log file. So everything we remo removed remained in the log file. So we, we would kind of check back afterwards if there were some problems. Then we would remove the old fields from the uh, uh, set. And then we would sort all the new fields which were created according to certain rules. And then we would write the record. And then these records would be put back to the database. So this was a, like a simplified process, what we were doing. I will show you a couple of examples of the problems we had in the, in the programming. Uh, oh, first, uh, how we selected the fields. We took only the, uh, mainly the four fields uh, which were using these uh, vocabularies, uh, four vocabularies. Uh, so the time, the subject, place, and the genre. And the conversion program then created some new fields uh, depending on the subfield type and the field type. 
And so this was the RDA, which uh, uh, Matthias mentioned. So we created many new fields which had not been uh, used widely before. Uh, for the YSO ter terms, uh, uh, concepts, and uh, genre concepts, we added also the URIs for the concepts. And then these uh, terms were produced in two languages. So uh, an example of the problem uh, of the places was that in mark records, the places are sometimes uh, uh, co uh, combinations of two fields. So the program had to find any, any uh, uh, couplings because in the thesaurus, they were already concatenated into uh, a single string. So the program had to find these uh, 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 combinations. And uh, if they would find it, the same combination in the, in the vocabulary, then it would uh, uh, use the uh, Scots relation to find it the same concept in the ontology. And then from the ontology, it would pick up the new labels, uh, the URIs, and then produce the new fields with that information. And uh, this was an example of a musical record. So this, uh, uh, in this case, it would produce the 370 lines fields. Um, another um, uh, complexity in the uh, analysis was um, in that some musical records, uh, uh, the experts wanted to keep the information which fields were uh, together, in the, uh, which terms were in the same field uh, in the record. For example, uh, this is a hypothetical in, uh, example about a symphony uh, composed in Helsinki in 1900 and then performed in Vienna in 2019. So we would need to keep together Helsinki in 1900 and Vienna in 2019. And this we were able to do with uh, using the subfield 8 and then adding an index number uh, for each field. And then we would produce uh, new lines. And then uh, the third uh, line on the first uh, example is uh, symphony orchestra. Well, that was a, a second term. Uh, from the musical uh, uh, ensemble, so th that would be moved to 382 lines. So we, in this example, we would have uh, three, uh, 650 fields, but in the new uh, record, there were no uh, 650 fields at all, just all these new fields. Uh, so the third uh, complexity was the, the uh, sorting. So uh, many times the indexes uh, have put the most important terms uh, what they consider more important on the top, and then the less important uh, lower, and we were asked uh, that we should try to keep the order. And uh, we tried to uh, manage this by indexing all the terms in the order which we handled them, uh, from uh, first to the last, and then uh, we produced uh, the new fields and sorted them according to this index number, and then also deduplicated uh, any, any possible duplicates. Uh, so some uh, lessons learned from this uh, part was that uh, the library systems did not automatically index all the new fields uh, because they had not been used before. So we have to discuss with the, the uh, library uh, system uh, providers that they, they should start indexing these new fields so that the, the uh, users could benefit from the indexes. Uh, then some systems were not able to uh, handle the, the new labels with the language uh, qualifiers, I mean vocabulary identifiers. So we had to discuss how to handle that problem. And then a third problem we had that we didn't have enough time for testing the runnings because we have to, we had these six different <laughs> conversions. We started with one, but the, when, while we were working, they were adding more and more and more. So we ran out of, out of time uh, eventually because there was only a certain time slot to do the uh, uh, conversion for the, for the National Union database. So what was the result of the uh, uh, set? Uh, we had uh, the National Union catalog has about 15 million records, uh, but only 5 million of those uh, really had uh, terms from these four vocabularies. And uh, from these 5 million records, we uh, handled uh, 23 million fields, which were eventually then removed. And then we produced uh, 45 million new fields. And uh, 22 million concepts, actually, but they were in two languages. So we made, uh, actually, the records bilingual uh, from the uh, indexing part. And then about a little less than a million of this uh, orchestration and ensemble terms were added, or moved from 650 field to this uh, 382. Uh, we managed to, to handle about 97% of the uh, uh, terms. So there was about 3%. Uh, which were uh, 
not handled, not converted, uh, but most of these 600,000 cases were uh, a really uh, long end of rare terms, uh, which were only one or two cases, so uh, that uh, really didn't matter. But there was about 160,000 terms which need to be handled. Those were mainly uh, terms which had multiple uh, matches uh, from one vocabulary to the other one. Uh, here is an example of the term ohiaus. In the old vocabulary, it was only one uh, term, but in the ontology, this is, uh, there is actually three concepts. And the program was not able to automatically uh, uh, make this conversation, so all this has to be manually handled. So what we did was that all the uh, non-matching terms were put into 653 uh, fields, and all the rest, uh, which were going to be manually handled, we kept in the same field, but we just removed the vocabulary identifiers and changed the second indicator to four. And uh, we can use this uh, on the basis to find these and then manually correct those. Okay. Yeah, that was the, the final lessons learned you can read from there. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, let's let's move to questions. But uh, uh, perhaps you could you summarize the lessons learned just in uh, a sentence or two. Well, actually, I could uh, repeat the, the uh, something what Matthias said that uh, the unwritten rules, what the indexes were using. So uh, we had long, many long discussions with the indexers and uh, specialists, and because uh, the data has been accumulated for, for 20 years or more, so the rules have been changing, and uh, it was not uh, easy to really check what were the rules before. So we had many long discussions and tried to uh, write down what, how the indexes, uh, how the uh, terms were used, and then we tried to make the rules according to that. So, if you're going to plan, planning something like this, try to document all the uh, existing rules and the earlier rules so that it can be transformed into uh, if sentences and, and so on. So that's like an important lesson to take back. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and now the floor is open to your questions. Oh, I'm very fascinating. Uh, in any case, to see how you work with subject, because it's a very hard topic in terms of uh, linked open data and uh, semantic. And uh, the first, que first question is just to be sure that I understood. You start from a string that is created using a different subfield in Mark, and you match each part of the string to create a term and to link uh, to this term, uh, to, to, to associate to this term a URI that uh, match with uh, a term coming from Dithesaurus, if I understood. We took the term uh, and then uh, compared the term with the original Thesaurus. Yes, and we there we would find a link to the new Thesaurus and we, oh. we would take the new term from the new one. Okay, yes, yes, you explain better. And uh, the question is, in this case, uh, you will have uh, a different subject with the term a URI, but uh, uh, how you maintain the chain of uh, meaning? Because a string respect to a term has the advantage to express a more complex concept. This is something related to, to Finnish history in this time uh, with this topic. So how you maintain this uh, chain of concept using the terms? Probably you use both in your record. Uh. <laughs> it's a long way. Yeah, uh, this, was, uh, this was one possibility. Uh, so, so using the, the uh, subfield eight, to sort of tie them together so that if it's Finnish history and, uh, I don't know, uh, Arabian art or whatever, uh, then then this construct could be used. But uh, actually, when, when going through the uh, the records, there weren't very many cases where the, where the link was uh, sort of uh, deemed important. Uh, it was 
uh, mostly in the in the music uh, part because there are often uh, different um, different uh, different types of music on the same same uh, well album or whatever. So there's uh, sort of the, the the most important ones. But uh, but we um, for the um, uh, for the union catalog. Uh, we didn't use this, uh, or, or <laughs> we didn't find this very useful for other things than music. But for the local databases, we uh, the mm, the conversion program allows you to use this this sort of construct for anything. So if you have been using uh, the, the sort of linking the terms together very strongly and have been using that, then you can retain the the structure. The data we made the decision that we, we will lose the information of the chains uh, because uh, the chain has a different concept, means a different concept than the individual terms. And we decided that it's more important to keep the individual terms. And uh, the idea of the chain is that the, the indexer has already thought beforehand uh, what, what this means, but now we shift this to the searcher. And the searcher makes the combinations when they're searching uh, with the indexing. So we, we, uh, the premeditated combinations, we forget that and we leave it to the searcher. That was the kind of the intellectual de uh, decision we made when we, uh, desi uh, when we planned this conversion. So you moved from a pre-coordinate system to a post-coordinate yeah. system? In a way, yes. Okay, this is yes. good. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, we don't have time for uh, more questions at this point, but please ask them uh, during the lunch break. Great. Come and see us.